Mount Everest towers over 8,000 meters above sea level, the highest point on Earth. From the ground, planes seem to fly higher than its peak with ease. Modern jets cruise at 10,000 to 12,000 meters well above the summit. So why don't planes simply fly directly over the world's tallest mountain? And why do pilots avoid this peak? And why has Everest remained off limits to commercial flight paths? Today, we'll find out. On a flat map, Everest looks like another point on the globe. The Himalayas stretch across Nepal, Tibet, India and Bhutan, but compared to the oceans or deserts, the region seems small. For flights between Europe and East Asia, the Great Circle routes, the shortest paths over the globe, look like they should pass straight over the Himalayas. But flight paths are not drawn on maps alone. They're designed with safety corridors, emergency routes, and alternate landing options. And here lies the first problem. The Himalayas offer none of those. Because above Everest, the atmosphere itself becomes hostile. Mountaineers call anything above 8,000 meters meters the death zone. At this altitude, oxygen levels drop to just one-third of sea level, human bodies weaken, thinking slows, and survival without supplemental oxygen is measured in hours. Aircraft cabins are pressurized so that passengers can breathe comfortably, even at cruising altitude. But if a plane were to lose pressure directly above Everest, there would be nowhere safe to descend. Aviation rules require aircraft to have emergency descent corridor paths where they can quickly drop to 3,000 meters or less so passengers can breathe. Over the Himalayas, that's impossible. Even after a steep emergency dive, the terrain remains higher than safe altitude. For pilots, that means flying over Everest breaks one of the fundamental principles of commercial aviation, always having a margin for survival. And if pressure isn't the killer, geography ensures that emergencies become disasters. Every long-haul route in the world is planned with diversion airports. If an engine fails or a medical emergency occurs, pilots have to be able to reach an airfield quickly. Over the Himalayas, there are none. The only airports in the region are tiny strips like Lukla in Nepal, just 527 meters long, on a slope and ending at a cliff. It's considered the most dangerous airport in the world. Large jets can't land there. Kathmandu is the only international airport in Nepal, but surrounded by mountains, it is unsuitable for most emergencies. Flying directly over Everest means that in the case of failure, the nearest viable airports are hundreds of kilometers away. In aviation, minutes matter. And here, there would be no chance at all. But even if nothing fails, the air itself above Everest turns against planes. When the jet stream collides with the Himalayas, it creates violent mountain waves, invisible ripples of air that extend thousands of meters upward. For mountaineers, these winds strip snow off the summit like a plume. For pilots, they cause turbulence so severe that aircraft can suddenly lose hundreds of meters of altitude. Over flat land, that drop is survivable. Over Everest, it could mean smash crashing into the world's tallest mountain. No airline wants to risk flying passengers into one of the most powerful natural turbulence factories on Earth. And turbulence is only one piece. The weather above Everest is one of the planet's greatest hazards. The Himalayas generate their own weather. Clouds form in minutes, storms sweep across valleys, and snow and hail pummel anything in their path. At high altitudes, moisture freezes into ice on aircraft wings and engines. Ice reduces lift and can cause engines to stall. Satellites provide limited forecasting for the region, and the ground-based radar is sparse. Unlike Europe or North America, where weather can be tracked and predicted, the skies above Everest are far less monitored. And for pilots, uncertainty will equal risk, and Everest's weather is uncertainty at its peak. But even if weather were predictable, the winds above Everest slice the sky in half. One of the planet's most powerful jet streams flows directly over the Himalayas. Speeds often exceed over 200 kilometers per hour. For eastbound flights, this can be a blessing, shaving hours off of travel time. But for westbound, it's a nightmare, adding hours and burning massive amounts of fuel. The jet stream above Everest does not flow smoothly. It collides with the peaks, producing violent crosswinds, and an aircraft flying into these winds could be blown off course by kilometers in seconds. For commercial aviation, predictability becomes everything. Above Everest, predictability vanishes. And while it looks high, Everest is not high enough for safety margins. Jets cruise between 10,000 and 12,000 thousand meters just above the summit of Everest. But at that altitude, engines lose efficiency, wings generate less lift, and if anything goes wrong, pilots have space above to climb or below to descend. Above Everest, there's no above left. If a plane drops suddenly in turbulence, a mountain rises to meet it. Aviation thrives on margins, the extra space for error. Everest erases every margin, and international law turns those dangers into strict prohibitions. Modern twin-engine aircraft follow ETOPS rules. Extended 
extended range twin engine operational performance standards. These require that a plane is always within a safe diversion distance from an alternate airport. Over Everest, no such airports exist. The International Civil Aviation Organization also sets terrain clearance standards. Light paths have to leave aircraft room to descend safely in case of an emergency. Over the Himalayas, the rule cannot be satisfied. The terrain violates aviation law, and that's why flight paths on global air maps curve north or south, never directly over Everest. And history proves why these rules exist. While no commercial jet has ever crashed directly into Everest, the Himalayas have claimed many aircraft. In 1992, a Thai Airways Airbus A310 crashed near Kathmandu after miscommunication and poor visibility, killing all 113 on board. That same year, Pakistan International Airlines Flight 268 struck a hillside on approach, killing 167. Smaller planes and helicopters crash frequently in the region due to sudden weather and turbulence. Lukla Airport alone has seen multiple fatal accidents. These tragedies show why large-scale commercial aviation avoids the region altogether. And it's not just airlines that avoid Everest. Even militaries keep their distance. Military aircraft are often designed to handle extreme conditions, yet even they will rarely fly over Everest. The Indian Air Force and Chinese Air Force operate in the region, but routes avoid the highest peaks. Helicopters have reached Everest Base Camp and even the summit once in 2005. A Euro helicopter AS-350 landed briefly on top. But this was a controlled stunt, not a practical operation. Military planners know the risks. No emergency options, unpredictable winds, and performance limits. For both civilian and military aviation, the skies above Everest remain a no-go zone. Even helicopters, symbols of agility barely touch the peak. Helicopters rely on air density for lift. At Everest summit, air density is so low that rotors generate almost no lift. In 2005, a French test pilot set a record by landing a helicopter on the summit. But the machine carried minimal fuel, no passengers, and flew in perfect conditions. Under normal operations, helicopters can't climb anywhere near that altitude. Rescue missions on Everest rarely go higher than 6,000 meters. Above that, the air is just too thin, engines are too weak, and rotor blades are ineffective. If helicopters can't operate there, it underlines why commercial jets don't risk it either. But if the skies are closed, what lies beneath makes the risk even sharper. The Himalayas are not only high, they're steep, jagged, and unforgiving. If a plane were forced to descend or lost control, the mountains give no chance for recovery. Unlike flat terrain, where emergency landings may be possible, here the ground rises like walls. And for aviation, Everest is not only a mountain, it's an absolute trap. And if risk wasn't enough, economics closes the case completely. Airlines plan routes for efficiency. Established flight corridors between Europe and Asia already bypass the Himalayas, curving north over Central Asia or south over India. These routes are safer, fuel efficient, and supported by airports for diversions. Flying over Everest would not save much distance, but would add enormous risk. Airlines make decisions on cost-benefit logic. Here, the benefit is almost zero, while the risk becomes enormous. That's why Everest is a blank spot on aviation maps. Still, the idea fascinates. What if, one day, planes did fly over Everest? If technology advances with ultra-efficient engines, better pressurization, and new safety margins, Everest flights might become possible. Supersonic or hypersonic aircraft could cross above with very little concern for terrain. But even then, the question remains, why bother? The world's busiest routes already work perfectly without crossing Everest. In the end, the fascination is symbolic. The thought of soaring above the highest mountain. But in aviation, symbolism never overrides safety, economics, and law. So why don't planes fly over Mount Everest? Because every rule of aviation says no. The air's too thin for safety margins. No airports for emergencies. Turbulent storms and jet streams make stability impossible. And airlines gain nothing by trying when safer, more efficient routes already exist. Mount Everest may dominate the Earth's surface, but in the skies above, it remains an empty zone, a place where mountains rule and aviation yields. Until technology changes the rules, no passenger jet will ever fly directly over the summit of the world. The world is full of mysteries, and we're here to crack them. Thanks for watching World Cracked. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you'd never miss another great video like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.